Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Thursday night and video number six in the Facebook Live series for the Social Media Manager Startup Live series. And I am Danielle Welch. I know that some of you have been along this journey with me for the last three weeks, basically. Um, but maybe for some of you, this is your first time getting to meet me. And so I'm going to get started here in just a minute. I like to warm up like these type of nights, especially after a long day with a little bit of a jam sesh. So don't mind me while I just make sure that everything's ready to go. I'm gonna have some music jamming and then we're gonna get started here in just a couple of minutes. So bear with me and uh, yeah, we'll get this party started here in just a couple of minutes. For those of you who've been with me all month, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being along with this journey with me and getting things going. I'm so, so excited for what's in store for tonight and to kind of start to bring things to a close. So just making sure that we're linked up everywhere that we want to be linked up. And yeah, we're about to get this party started. So, all right. Well, tonight is... To, in my opinion, it's the main event. It's the thing that I've been wanting to kind of work up towards all month and really just get an opportunity to share with all of you um, like what my tips are specifically to getting your own social media management business started. Because there's a lot to that, right? There's a lot that goes into um, you know starting a social media management business. But today, what I'm really wanting to do is build some belief for you guys and just kind of give you that permission that I think you might need to really just take that leap. So just gonna make sure my phone's off because you know, that's a situation sometimes. Um, my husband's got the kids off at the park, so we shouldn't have any interruptions, which is great. But make sure we're all good here. All right. So tonight we are gonna be talking about how does it get started as a social media manager? So I'm gonna be bouncing between me and a couple of different screens here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in here. I'm gonna just kind of walk you guys through some of the things that I guess I wish I would have thought about or known about prior to starting my social media management business. So just gonna kind of get started here and get, get things kicked off. Kind of my agenda for tonight is really to cover with you guys um, you know, the tips for getting started. So some things that you can do right away, right now to get some experience under your belt as a social media manager. Also want to kind of walk you through um, typical schedule or like kind of what a day in the life looks like. And if you guys are here with me, by the way, live joining, let me know. Hey, Nicole, thank you. Um, I love this shirt too. It's going to piss some people off for me to say this, but this is a Walmart shirt. So holla. Um, it only makes people mad because then they go buy $50 shirts and I paid like six bucks for this. So winning. Um, we're also going to be talking tonight about what the tasks and role of a social media manager are. So like, what are the things that, um, typically you need to be responsible for? I'm also going to do some like Q and a, so some things that I've heard from people, like questions they've asked me, and then I'm going to be announcing the details to my community program, which is launching starting tonight. So here we go. Diving right into where what we're going to get ta talking about tonight. So tips for getting started as a social media manager. Some things that you can do right now to start to get experience is start building your portfolio and resume at any chance possible. When I started my business as a website freelancer and then I started getting into more of the social media marketing and management, what I did was is I just reached out to my existing network. I asked them like, hey, do you you know, know any small business owners or anybody that needs website design help or social media management help because um, I'm wanting to get some experience there. And I kind of found myself, um, you know, pricing myself a little bit lower because um, I really just needed to get the experience, you know, so that I could start to build up a little bit of a portfolio. So any opportunity you get to kind of share you know, your services or like your desire for wanting to do more social media management, just make sure you're getting your name out there. Talk about it, you know, talk about, you know, when you're with family and friends, like 
you know, something that you're wanting to do right now is just really start to tap into more social media stuff, you know. Um, some of the best places that you can go to start to find some freelancing work um, is Upwork.com, People Per Hour, or Freelancer.com. Those are just a few websites to maybe go find some quick, easy clients that you can work with. Might be more project-based, which is fine, because right now all you need is just to get some experience under your belt. I hear a lot of times people ask me, like, how can I get started as a social media manager if I've never done it before? And my answer is always like, well, then go do it, right? Like, you, if you want experience, you have to go get the experience. So an easy, easy way to do that is go be your own social media manager for yourself. Go start creating more content on your personal pages or start your own business pages, especially on Instagram. Um, start marketing yourself, right? and using what you would do for a client for yourself. You are your best opportunity to build a portfolio, you know? If I can say that, you know, I've been able to organically grow my Instagram account from zero to almost a thousand followers in a year and a half time frame without paying for any bots or, you know, anything like that, um, and it's all quality followers, that's a pretty good statement to be able to make to a client. Yeah, you might be saying like, Danielle, that's only a thousand followers. Well, a thousand followers that are highly engaged with content is better than 10,000 who are just a bunch of fluff followers. Does that make sense? So best tip for you right now, like you wanna get some experience in being a social media manager, start to promote yourself, start to create content on your own behalf. I see people do this right now on Instagram where they kind of are like, um, you know, framing their Instagram feeds to look really pretty and aesthetic and, you know, things like that. There's some intentionality behind why they're doing that. That's an easy way for you to kind of show off your skill set and potentially your work. So um, let's see. Next, moving on here. Let's get this going. Typical schedule or like kind of day in the life. So what to kind of expect when you are a social media manager working for your clients? Here's kind of what I do on a regular basis with, with my kind of like when I'm signed in for the day or clocked in for the day. Um, the first thing I always do when I start my work day is I check my emails from clients and I respond to anything that needs like high priority right away. But anything else that's going to take me longer than a few minutes to do, um, I will put that on a project list and I'll kind of uh, you know, park it in a different area of my day or week to get done. Um, when I'm saying like check your emails like as the, as the first thing, like you got to have a time limit on that because you can easily find yourself um, spending way too much time in your email. So I say like 30 minutes max to like check your emails, get caught up for the day, and then at, right after that, immediately go into your first project. For me, one of the first things that I do is, is I log in um, to my Facebook um, because all of my clients' Facebook accounts are linked to my personal account. Um, I then will make sure and have my Instagram pulled up on my phone so all of my clients show up there as well. Um, and then I basically what I do is, is I just log in, I check engagements, look to see if there's any new um, followers, um, comments, and I'm interacting on my clients' accounts and pages um, to start the day. So anything that I might have missed overnight, I'm getting caught up on, right? Um, also during that time, um, I might make my post for the day that need to get published. Now for me, one thing that I do today that's been really, really helpful, you guys, is I batch all of my content or um, I plan it out and schedule it out ahead of time instead of posting daily, if that makes sense. Um, I teach, I've been teaching this philosophy, like this uh, process, um, really for this entire year. And it's something that was a huge game changer for me in my business, which is this process of um, batching content where you plan the content, you create it, and then you schedule it all in one setting. And you can typically get an entire month's worth of content done in three or four hours. So imagine as a social media manager, you know, you have one of your clients that you're working with and you're creating all of their content. You could be able to create all their content for an entire month in, let's say, a four hour time frame, right? And that still leaves you all this additional time throughout the month to be able to work on engaging with their audience, growing their following, and things along those lines. And that's just by batching content. And I think that that's so, so important. Um, that's freed me up a lot. 
I'll also do any like Instagram story posts, um, you know, live during the, the daytime hours as well. And then engaging with their audience and growth activities. So primarily for me, like doing my social media management tasks, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm, I'm checking my emails and doing anything that my clients might need me to do. I'm getting into the platforms and checking any of the engagements and comments. Um, making any posts that I need to make for that day, um, and then I'm engaging with their audience and doing more growth activities. Um, moving on here. So what are the typical tasks and role of a social media manager? So a social media manager represents businesses online through their social media pages. So that could be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I mean, it could literally be anything. Um, the social media manager is typically also in charge of creating graphics and writing posts on behalf of their clients, um, responding to comments, messages, inquiries, um, both the good stuff and the bad stuff. Um, so you got to be prepared for that. Um, the social media manager is also in charge of growth and engagement for the pages. So a lot of times, um, some things that I hear from people that are social media managers are like, my clients, you know, their accounts aren't growing, you know, or we've stalled out or my clients asking me like, you know, what's the return on investment right now? Like all those types of things. So as the social media manager, you've got to make sure that you're properly positioned and that you're making sure you have daily activity to grow their pages as well. That's going to be a huge thing that your clients look for. Um, you know, you might be asked to be responsible for ad management or boosting posts for them. So having a little bit of um, knowledge and experience in the ad, you know, in the ad campaign, there's a lot of great trainings out there to learn how to do uh, boosted posts and ads management. Um, so if you have that skill set, that's going to be an, a great benefit to you um, just to leverage yourself against other social media managers. Um, and then you might also be asked to manage someone's Facebook group if they're more of a you know, solo entrepreneur, online business owner, um, Facebook groups are all the rave right now and they're a lot to handle and a lot to manage. So you might get asked to, you know, manage the Facebook group. So if you have that skill set, that's going to be, you know, something that's a value as well. But typically it's all content creation and then managing the engagement and growth of the social media pages for your clients. Um, so here's kind of some questions that I began getting asked here over the last month and that I typically get asked by people. So I'm going to kind of run through a rapid fire Q and a with you guys. So how much does a social media manager make? I get this question often. Um, depending on what services you offer to your clients, you can make anywhere from 300 to $2,000 a month per client or more, depending on how efficient you come be efficient you become with your with your services so um, how you price yourself is really honestly it's up to you you know um, some of my clients you know they're paying more um, I have more entry-level packages for them so they're probably more in that like four to five hundred dollars a month range um, but I do have some four figure a month per client you know packages that I have as well because I'm also offering a lot of different services to them um, and I've become very efficient in my business. So how much you make is really dependent upon you. You know, for me, this is a full-time income for our family. Um, sometimes people want to become a social media manager just to be able to take care of, you know, maybe paying off debt or this is their fun money, you know, and instead of going and getting a part-time job, you know, where you might make $12 an hour, um, you know, as a social media manager, you can price yourself to make maybe 20 to $30 an hour. Um, or more, you know, so um, it just gives you that flexibility, but how much you make is really dependent on really how, like how How valuable do you see your services and if you need help with that, then that's why you got to have a coach um, But also like how much do you want to be working in a month? So next question I get asked is how many clients can a social media manager take on and Surprise surprise the answer to that is as many as you want as long as you don't spread yourself too thin like I know what my capacity is to work with my social media management clients. Um, I know what my cap is because I just don't ever want to be in a position where um, my value is decreased because I'm trying to serve too many people, right? Um, and it also depends on how many hours you want to work. So here's like a hypothetical situation here. Um, let's say that 
one client per month for you doing content management. So that's creating the content and engaging with their audience. Um, takes you five hours a month. You'd have to be very efficient, just so you know, for five hours a month. Um, but say it's five hours a month and you want to work only 20 hours a week in your business, that's 80 hours per month. At that rate, you can have 15 clients. So say you have 15 clients that are paying you, oh, I don't know, let's say on the low end, $300 a month. You're making $4,500 a month at that point. If you have 15 clients, five hours a month per each, you know, um, say you make $500 a month per client, you know, for your services that you offer them. Um, and that's 15 clients. Then you're making about $7,500 a month. Really, again, it's how much do you want to be working? I think what's more realistic is that one client may take you 10 hours a month once you get really, really efficient in your business and you're doing more engagement and growth activities for them. So say it's 10 hours in a month um, that you work per client and you only want to work 20 hours in a week. So that's, again, about 80 hours per month. You can handle eight clients. So say you're working eight clients um, and you, you know, charge $500 a month for your services. I'm just throwing out numbers here. This is not coaching for you on what you should price yourself at. But eight clients working 20 hours a week, that's $4,000 a month. So just kind of some like, how much money can you make? How many clients can you take on? Again, it just depends on how you price yourself and how many hours that you want to be working. Okay, so just kind of some ideas there. Um, how often do you get paid? So I bill my clients monthly at the beginning of the month. I use Wave Apps for invoicing, um, but I've also used Stripe and PayPal and just full transparency, I'm probably gonna be moving over to only invoicing on Stripe um, towards the end of the year, beginning of 2021. That's just because I'm a melancholy type of personality and I like to have everything in one place. And right now I have my invoicing going through Wave, all of my digital products going through Stripe and all this, just too many places. So I'm simplifying my processes. But Wave apps, Stripe and PayPal, they're free. So you don't pay for them every month. You just pay a transaction fee anytime your client pays you by credit card. Um, you can have clients send you a check if you decide to do that. I don't recommend it unless you have a very close relationship with those clients. Um, and sometimes that comes later. Um, but I use Wave Apps. It's pretty efficient and it's easy to use. So um, moving on, I'm rapid firing, guys. Um, if you have any questions here, don't hesitate to drop them in. Um, how do you track your work as a social media manager? So I use Trello. Um, it's a really wonderful tool online that can be used kind of like a an organizer tool, a project management tool. It's literally everything. To me, it's like a digital planner. Or like, you know, I've got my like, here. Let me zoom in for you guys. I've got my like weekly planner, or you know, like my binder planner or whatever. I have this. And I feel like Trello is that for me, but I also get the benefit of it being digital. So I can have it on my desktop and on my phone. I use Trello a lot. Um, that's how I communicate with um, my virtual assistants that help me with my clients. Um, I use Google Docs to house all of the content that I have created for my clients. So when the graphics get created, the captions get written, um, they all live in a Google Doc, so it's on the cloud. Um, it's not living on my computer, so if something happens to my computer, you know, I don't lose all of the history of the content I created. It's easy to share with my clients if my clients want to approve their content every month. Um, and it's, it's really nice because I can always go back to it very easily. Um, I use Toggle, um, or it's called Toggle Track now, um, to track my time. So they, you can have like a Google Chrome um, extension installed to uh, your browser settings and it's just a click of a button and it starts tracking your time and you can say like what project it is that you're working on. Um, I use, I do like to use that when I'm first beginning to work with a client the first couple of months so that I can make sure that I'm being efficient with my time um, and that it, it helps me too to kind of no, okay, if it takes me seven hours to work with this type of client with this package, then I know how many more clients like that I can take on because I'm tracking my time. Um, okay, so let's see here, moving on. 
So what skills do you need to become a social media manager? So to become a social media manager, you really need to be able to write in a conversational tone. So you don't have to have like an English background or be a copywriter or anything like that. Like that's actually not the greatest for um, utilizing, you know, when you're creating captions for your client. What you need to be able to do though is capture your, your client's tone that they need to have to connect with their audience. So writing more conversationally. If you look at any of my social media posts, um, you'll see that I write as if I'm talking to a friend. Sarah's got a question here. She said, so Toggle um, is an add-on, it's not an app. So Toggle is this. Let me try to show you here. I'm gonna try to do this. Hopefully you can still see my screen. So Sarah, if you're seeing this, this little Google Chrome extension right here, it's an it's an extension that you can add onto your Google Chrome. It is also an app that you can download to your phone. So I do have some people who they have it on their phone and as soon as they start working, they can click the button on their phone. So it is an app. Um, but if I'm working on my desktop, then I can just hit the start button and I can give it a title. So what am I doing right now? I'm doing um, a live training, right? And then you can connect it to a certain project, um, and then you can add tags if you want to, and then you say done, and it runs in the background. Here's the little like disclaimer though. If you don't hit stop when you're done working, it will run and run and run overnight. And I've forgotten one time to like, stop it and it ran for like 24 hours um and what's really cool about it too sarah is once it's done like when you go to the actual website you can run reports um so that you can track what your monthly time was so you can track it by client um you can track it by project type and then you can export it and easily send that to your client if you need to if they want to track like what your time was or what you were working on so that's toggle it's called toggle track but it's t-o-g-g-l okay great question um okay so back to what skills do you need to become a social media manager um the ability to create images and content for pages using tools like Canva. So Canva is like a really easy to use graphic design tool. They have a lot of great templates. You do not have to be a graphic design guru by any chance um, to create, you know, good visual content. But Canva does a really good job of making it simple to do it. Um, yeah, Sarah, you can just search for it or you can type in T-O-G-G-L here. That should work. I'm putting it back in the comment section, so hopefully that works. Um, it's a great tool to use, um, or you can search in your app on your phone. Um, but back to Canva. So using Canva, like what's beautiful about Canva too is, is they do have some like training videos that you can use uh, to learn and develop your skill set. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you guys more inside the community program what you're going to have access to um, in a full Canva training that's available in there. Um, but just your, you know, one skill that you need to have is the ability to create images and content for pages. Um, the next thing is, is the ability to gain knowledge on the social media platform. So learning and knowing how to use Facebook and Instagram, those are the two primary ones that you need. But always, I just tell people like, if you want to become a social media manager and, and get clients, then you need to know your stuff. And so always be learning is what I say. That doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of time researching, but as you're using the platforms as a consumer, make sure like as a, just an everyday user and not, you don't have your social media management hat on, make sure you're always thinking about, okay, like why is the platform showing me what it's showing me right now? Just always be trying to figure out the platform um, and learning as much as you can about how to leverage Facebook and Instagram. Like continuing education is huge. So, um, just continuing to grow your knowledge of the platforms is, is big. Um, the next skill that you need to have is be comfortable communicating with your clients. Um, you know, you're especially in the early stages of building that client relationship and kind of your onboarding process, um, maybe even in the sales process. Like you're gonna need to get comfortable talking to customers more than likely face to face. Okay. Um, inside of my program that I'm gonna be talking about later, like 
we're going to do a whole sales training and the proper way to go about finding clients, building clients and communicating with them, onboarding them and everything. So you got to be comfortable with, you know, getting outside of your comfort zone. And then you also got to be comfortable with communicating with your clients audiences on their behalf. So part of your onboarding process may need to be what, you know, how do you want me to communicate with your audience if they have questions? You know, do you want me to answer their questions? Do you want me to send it to you so that you are aware of it? Um, but just having high levels of communication is going to be something that you need as a social media manager. And then the last thing I wanted to add on here is organization and accountability. Okay. So organizing yourself is just going to keep you from overworking in your social media management business. Having processes in place and systems is key, but also tracking your activity, um, keeping a record of everything that you create for your clients. Um, that type of organization is definitely needed. Um, when I got my business started, like I was literally just throwing mud at the wall when it came to like organizational processes and was just trying to figure it all out on my own. Today, I have systems in place. I have processes in order. I've learned how to take 40 hours a week of work and really fit it into about 12 hours. And that's a huge thing because you could while I only work 12 hours a week now, I could add more if I wanted to, which means my income could grow. And that the key pillar for that is the organization that I have in my business. And then accountability. Here's the thing, guys. I think there's too many people out there um, in our society, and I'm guilty of this too. Like I try not to be as often, but there's times when I when I falter where we don't back up our word, you know, whether it's um, say, saying we're gonna do 20 posts a month for a client and we only do 19. You know, like we need to make sure that we're backing up our word, that we deliver on what we say we're going to deliver on. Or it could be as simple as a monthly meeting that you might have with your client. Um, you know, like standing, you know, writing that into your planner with pen and not pencil. So not letting that that meeting move, if at all possible. Um, and and just being somebody that that operates with character and integrity in your business. I think that's going to be a huge, huge separator. Um, from for you to anyone else that they may be looking at for that social media management service. All right, moving on. What platforms are primarily used for social media marketing? So this is really going to depend on the type of business and the industry. Um, but the top two are definitely Facebook and Instagram. Um, that's primarily where users are at when they're spending time on social media apps. So um, that's probably where you need to focus your skill set. Um, if you have the ability to serve your clients with LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, or any other platform, that is going to be such a great advantage for you. Um, because then you're going to offer them more services, which brings more value um, to who you are to them. So for a lot of my clients, I get I just because of my experience as a digital marketing consultant. So I have the strategy and framework to help small businesses um, market themselves across any platform. Like I now have, I offer social media management, but I also do consulting and strategy work for all types of digital marketing. So websites, SEO, ad campaign strategies, um, email marketing, funneling systems, like the more that you know, the greater that you can serve your clients. But just to start, you really only need to know Facebook and Instagram. All right. So what tools do you need as a social media manager? You're going to need to have a scheduling tool like Creator Studio. That's only for Facebook and Instagram or Buffer or Hootsuite or Planoly or something. Anything that allows you to input the right, like the post that you're going to write for them, the caption, uh, sorry, that was the caption, and then the graphics and schedule it out ahead of time. That's part of batching your content. So planning it all ahead and getting it done ahead of time. Um, you're definitely going to want to have a scheduling tool like that. Um, and, you know, Creator Studio is free. Um, Buffer, Hootsuite, and Planoly, they do have a monthly cost to them um, after, you know, so many accounts are connected or so many posts per month. So that's a little bit of a, of a cost, you know, kind of your overhead cost as a social media manager. So um, just something to keep in mind. Um, you definitely want to have Canva um, so that you can create your graphics. There is a free version of Canva, but I recommend that you invest the $12.95 a month for their pro version because it comes with a lot more um, bells and whistles. You're going to want to have an email set up so that you can communicate with your clients. Um, unless your client says they want to communicate by text message, 
you need to always default to all client communication via email, especially when it comes to talking about your services, your terms, and anything like that so that you can keep a record of it. Um, and then I also think that you need to have a time tracker. And again, this is primarily for your own use. Um, unless you are someone who you work, uh, you know, like more on a, um, a per hour basis with your clients, which I don't recommend necessarily. Um, but time tracker, in, in case your clients want to know like how much time you spent with them. My clients don't ask me that because I don't price myself by the hour. Um, but I do like to have the time tracker for myself. Okay, here we go. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you're dropping them in the comments. Um, so are there any cons of becoming a social media manager or anything to look out for? You know, like I've painted this really beautiful picture this month for you guys on what it takes to be a social media manager and the results that it can create for you in life. And I just want to be very clear, like there are some negatives, you know, to, to be on the lookout for or things that you should avoid. Definitely things that you should avoid to, to have a, a more successful start than I would say I did. Um, so here's a couple of things. If you don't manage your clients, they will manage you. And what I mean by that is if you don't back up the, your word on what you say you're going to do for them. But really, um, I look to always be the expert in social media for my clients. I don't want my clients to ever have to come to me and say, hey, did you do this today? Or like, uh, when are you planning on doing this? So being proactive is so huge and so important for you um, when you're working with your clients. I always tell people like over communicate as you know, and definitely in the beginning. Now that doesn't mean you have to tell them every day what you did. They definitely probably don't want that. Um, but just always be, um, I just always try to be the one that reaches out to my clients first. Um, instead of them reaching out to me. Now, of course, they may reach out to me because they have an idea or something like that, um, but I'm always the one that's trying to pursue them from a communication standpoint, if that makes sense. Um, the next thing is when you don't set proper expectations with your clients at the beginning of the relationship on what they're gonna receive from you, that's usually what leads and causes cancellations. So typically frustration you know in a client relationship comes from when expectations are not met right or they weren't explained properly and so therefore there's confusion and stuff like that so here's the th biggest thing that i tell my clients is set the right expectations up front with your clients on what your deliverables will be so for a lot of my clients our focus is not growing their follower count our focus is a lot more brand awareness and engagement on their posts. But I don't have a whole lot of clients who are asking me every month, hey, how many followers did we grow by this month? Or this or that. Because for the clients that I'm working with right now, that's not their objective and their strategy, right? With their social media, it's more about brand awareness and establishing them as an industry leader. So I set that expectation up with my clients so that I don't, for me, I don't have to worry about those conversations of, I, you know, what's the return on my investment with you right now, Danielle? Like, I'm investing this much money into you. Like, what am, can you show me what I'm getting back from that? Um, because I let them know a lot of content creation objective is not to necessarily drive leads, okay? Especially when it comes to Facebook, because only 10%, 10 to 20% of their audience is even seeing their posts, unless they're boosting their posts. So just, Make sure that you communicate early on the front end, like what the proper expectations are for the deliverables that you're going to be providing them. That's a huge thing. Um, another thing is, you know, that's kind of a con of being a social media manager is you're really, you know, you can be at the will of their financial situation. And sometimes marketing can be one of the first things that they eliminate from their budgets when times get tough. And I think 2020 is kind of a really good example of that. Um, I feel very blessed and I'm very happy that a lot of my clients did not see, um, you know, long term financial, uh, you know, disaster from the global pandemic and from a lot of them having to, you know, stop business for like an entire month or two. Um, I feel very fortunate um, for that. But, you know, there's also a lot of people out there who their business is completely shut down or um, they had to cut back on their budgeting. and whatever it might be. And so it's like, you're going to be at the will of their financial situation. And that can be something that um, is hard to deal with. You know, 
um, unless you put them in, you know, like three, six or 12 month long contracts, um, you know, so that you can kind of predict what your income is, um, you know, but a lot of times, you know, if you have a client who they have to cancel because they just like, it's not sustainable for them to continue to work with you, um, then, you know, you're kind of at the will of their financial situation and that can be really tough for you and for them, you know, um, because then they're losing the service that they definitely need. So that's another thing. And we're going to talk more inside of the, the program about how to avoid that kind of stuff and, and how to work through that. Um, but if you have any questions or anything else you want to ask about, um, you know, any of the cons or anything to look out for with becoming a social media manager, um, make sure you drop those in the comments here. All right. We're getting close to the end guys. All right. So another question that I've been asked is if you could go back to the beginning and start all over again, what would you do different? Well, first of all, I would spell mentor right in my slide there. No, I'm just I did spell it wrong, but it's fine. Um, I would work with a mentor or coach who could show me the ropes and help me to learn faster so that I could have more profitability and scalability in my business early on. So I took my experience as a social, like as a digital marketing consultant, right? For the companies that I worked for. I took that experience and I started a company. And when I started this company, my idea was is that I would work less. But what I found is, is that I was working 40 hours a week still with a baby at home, and you know, like a toddler, and then another baby on the way. And I figured out a lot in my business on my own. Um, I learned quite a lot on my own. Um, I did a lot of things wrong. Um, I probably slowed my growth um, quite a bit. I mean, if you look at my story, um, it sounds really great from a like revenue standpoint. So, you know, I replaced my full-time income within three months and I quit my job and I started doing this full-time. And then, um, within a few months of that, I, uh, found myself working more with social media clients and by month number nine or 10, um, I had my first $10,000 revenue month, which was awesome in the bank account, but I worked my tail off for that. Plus that was like eight weeks after I'd had my baby and I was like zapped. I mean, I think I worked probably 60 hours a week that month, which was not the goal, not the plan. Um, and I was just taking any client at, that I could. Right. And I was just, um, trying to do all the things and I was hustle, hustle, hustle. And, um, one thing that I know and that I pursued with like just in general, like seven years ago, if you've been following along with me in this you know, series this year or this month, then you've heard me talk about the fact that seven years ago, my husband and I, we got connected with some very successful entrepreneurs in Kansas City who they had created results in life that we wanted and they were willing to coach us on how to do the same thing. So we pursued their mentorship so that we could learn how to do what they did faster than what we could do it on our own, right? And I did not apply that philosophy to starting my social media business, which is silly. Um, but I feel like for me, like I feel like I needed to kind of go through some of the muck um, because I've learned what to do and what not to do in a social media business. And I really kind of feel like it's led me to this point today where I have a desire now more than ever to help other social media managers get their businesses started right from the beginning without having to go through some of the crud that I put myself through when I started my business. So if I could go back and do anything, I definitely would have worked with a coach and a mentor who could give me the hands-on help and hands-on coaching and strategy that I needed um, to be more efficient in my business. Um, so that leads me to what I wanna talk to you guys about today, um, which is the announcement of the open enrollment for my new social media manager startup community program. And I'm so, so excited to be opening the doors to this program because um, really since the beginning of this year, this has been a vision of mine um, to do. And there's a little bit of backstory to that. So at the beginning of the shutdown, um, which here in Kansas City that happened at Mar on March 10th, um, within the first week or two of the shutdown happening, um, you, you kind of start hearing in your own networks that people were starting to get furloughed and people were starting to lose their jobs and things were starting to get tough financially. And there was no, you know, government financial aid yet coming in. Um, you know, the, 
oh, whatever it was called, I can't even remember, but the, the stimulus checks weren't coming in and people were really starting to kind of freak out because what they thought was secure with their job really wasn't, right? And um, I remember just feeling so grateful and, and thankful that I worked for myself now I had to have some really um, interesting conversations with my clients and helping them to stay calm because they're small business owners. They're worried about things too. And um, so it was a stressful time, no doubt. But I remember just thinking about people who um, they weren't going to be able to do anything for income because their previous job was in retail or um, required them to be around people. So their, their jobs had shut down or whatever it was. And I was seeing a lot of people posting online about, what are jobs that I can do to work from home and all this stuff. And I've not really been somebody who's like a side hustle, you know, side gig type of pusher or anything like that because um, I'm the kind of person that's like, if I'm going to put time and invest time and energy into something right now, I don't want it to just give me a return, you know, or, you know, like an income right now. I want it to be something that also pays me in the future. Right. And so you know, I'm seeing all these posts online and every, you know, like everyone's saying like, what can I do to make money, you know, during the shutdown right now? And all these different types of suggestions were going out, like just stuff, you know, like stuff that was probably legit and a lot of stuff that definitely seemed like it was not legit and um, stuff that would, uh, you know, just maybe be overnight success, not something sustainable. And I remember thinking like, well, I feel like I'm in a good position and I'm going to be okay. Like I wish maybe there was a way that I could help people, you know, learn to do what I wanted, to, like what I do as a social media manager. And I kind of sat on it and I sat on it for a while because I think I was afraid to, um, I don't know, step out and feel like, you know, I just, I don't know. I didn't want anyone to feel like I was trying to, I didn't want to feel like everything else out there that people were saying like, Oh, you could do this, you know? Um, and I really, I had a conversation with my mentor Paige and another business coach of mine, um, Rachel and gum. And I was just like, I really feel like there's a need here and I don't want it to just be because like the pandemic and everything that's gone on. But I really think there's an opportunity for me to take everything that I've learned, not just in my two years of being a social media manager, but my entire career in marketing and advertising, and teach it to people so that in seven years of my learning, my experience, my failures, my successes, I could package that to, for people so that they could go create something for themselves, right? For me, it's been able to create an opportunity where I get to stay home with my daughters full time. I work 12 hours a week and I'm in this business here. Uh, my husband and I have another business that we invest a lot of our time, a lot, I say, but we invest time into, again, that's only like 10 to 12 hours a week too. Um, I've created more flexibility in my life. I'm not completely financially free or independent by any means, but I'm in a better position today than I was three years ago when I was working a job um, or seven years ago when I worked 70 hours a week and only made $30,000 a year. Like I know that there's things that I can teach people. And so that's why I put together the startup community program to teach other people how to become social media managers for themselves. And so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what's inside of that program. Um, so did you have an understanding of everything that you're going to get from me um, in that program? And I know this is kind of small font, so I'm going to just pop up um, the link to the website here so that you guys can see that. Um, and in fact, I'm going to make it scroll across the bottom so that it doesn't hide everything I want to see. So you can go check this out and enrollment's open for this um, right now, but it's socialwithdanielle.com forward slash startup. But inside of the program, um, here's everything that I'm going to be t touching on. And I'm just telling people like, this is an all inclusive program. So meaning what you see here is definitely what you're going to get, but there's probably going to be more as we get into the program but it is a six, a six month program and we are going to be covering the whole mindset strategy and philosophy behind why social media marketing is so important for small businesses and the role that it plays in the bigger picture of the digital marketing world, okay? You have to understand how social media affects email marketing or how social media affects anything that they're doing in magazines or anything like that. So I'm gonna be teaching you the strategy behind social media marketing. I'm gonna be teaching you how to build a brand for your own business as a social media marketer and then applying that knowledge 
to help your clients build their brands. I'm going to walk you through how to create a branding or a mood board. So if your client doesn't know what their colors and logos and everything are, I'm going to help you to know how to create one for them. Um, also, we're going to learn how to identify and develop customer profiles to capture an audience's voice in content writing. So if you plan on doing any content management with your clients, you're going to need to understand how to create customer pro profiles and then capture that audience's voice so that you write content that is attractive. Um, we're going to go through and learn the top seven social media platforms and who uses them, how to navigate and use Facebook for business as well as Instagram. I'm going to be teaching my signature program on batching content to save dozens of hours every month, uh, walking you through the strategy for successfully engaging with an audience and then kind of what my growth activity strategy looks like, um, how to beat the algorithms with your content, how to read and report on data and analytics, how to do um, a setup for a business page on Facebook and Instagram. I do have a bonus training in here on how to grow your Instagram, as well as a Canva tutorial, um, how to price your services as a social media manager, where to find your clients and how to market and service them. Um, I'm even gonna be offering website help um, to help you create your own website. You don't have to have one necessarily, but um, for those of you that want help in getting a website set up, that will be included. We're going to be having sales training, um, so how to close the deal with clients, and then all sorts of different client, uh, excuse me, trainings on system setup, administrative training, so like how to create contracts, invoicing, negotiating, bookkeeping, all of that. So you can see there is a lot of information that's going to be inside of this six-month program. Now, I didn't want to create a program that was just a uh, you know video course where you go watch it and then you go apply it. Like I've I've done those. I have a video course um, that's that for that specifically. But I knew that what I needed when I got started as a social media manager was I needed the hands-on help. I needed a coach. I needed somebody who could. Hey, I've got this client situation. Don't really know what to do with it. I'm kind of running dry on ideas. Can you give me some perspective? Can you give me some help? Or, um, hey guys, like I, I, I wish I would have had a community where I could say, hey, I've got a potential client who's looking for this, this, and this, and what do you guys think I should put together as my package, right? And I want, I wanted to be able to be in a position where I can provide that. And so instead of just having a video course, I was like, this needs to be something that is a monthly program for at least six months. The first three months are really, I've got a whole syllabus that I'm kind of working on for the, the six months together, but definitely the first three months are going to be focused on developing the skill set, the strategy, um, and beginning to get some experience um, with creating content. So we're going to be doing some stuff to kind of put some feelers out there, creating content for yourself. Um, and really the second half, kind of like month three through six, is going to be all about ongoing training, different like sales trainings, um, you know, kind of the administrative stuff for your business, how to get clients, where to find them, um, all of that kind of stuff. So what is going to be inside of the program? So how does it work? There's going to be three group coaching calls per month with me, and then we're going to have a guest speaker come in for one of those calls. You're going to have access to over 30 video trainings on demand. Um, and you'll have lifetime access to those video trainings, so you can reference back to them as you need it. Um, let me zoom in here for you guys. So group coaching, so three video calls per month. Um, those video calls will be recorded. Um, I always encourage my students to be on for the live so that you can do hot seats. Um, so if you have specific questions, I'll be answering them on those group coaching calls. Um, but there'll be three a month. And then um, on-demand video training. So you will have access to my bank of video trainings, a lot of what I covered up above. Um, and then we'll be doing bonus trainings with guest experts coming in to talk about branding and websites and email marketing and helping you to develop a more well-rounded skill set, okay? Um, so this program is going to be for you if you are wanting to become a social media manager, either part-time or full-time. You've grown tired of doing hour after hour of research, watching and reading about social media from multiple sources to only feel more overwhelmed. So you're at that place where you're like, I've tried to learn all the things that I can learn and I just still don't know how to get this business started. Like if that feels like you, um, then this is definitely a program that you need to look at. 
Um, you know that you want a coach who can give you specific answers and training based on experience, not just on hypothetical ideas, right? Um, this program is for you if you want to have someone who can help you stay accountable to your growth and development. I think as an entrepreneur, one of the, the biggest things that has helped me to continue to grow and develop is having a coach to keep me accountable to what my goals are. And um, just we're more likely to quit on ourselves before we are willing to quit on somebody else. So having that coach to keep you accountable is so important. Um, and this program is right for you if you are ready to take action and get big results, but you just need the plan to follow to get there. But here's the thing, guys. This program is not for you if you're just looking to make some quick cash and you prefer cutting corners. Um, this is not for you if you do not find joy in serving others and, um, and you only want to succeed for a personal gain. Okay, This program is definitely not for you if that's you. Um, it's not for you if you're not willing to invest at least one hour per week into developing your skill set as a social media manager. And that's a minimum, okay? Um, if you're not willing to put extra time into your growth and development as an entrepreneur, you don't need to, you do not need to even consider doing this program. Um, this program is not for you if you're not willing to get outside of your comfort zone. I'm an Enneagram 8. I've been a volleyball coach for eight. Well, I was a volleyball coach for eight years. I'm a business mentor, have been for the last six years. Um, I am the type of woman that will get you outside of your comfort zone. Um, so if you're not willing to be stretched and to really see what is inside of you and have that come out, um, then don't enroll. Because <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the greatness out of you. Um, and this is not a program for you if you don't want to do any marketing activities to get yourself noticed by potential clients. Like if you have no desire to put yourself out there, um, then don't just don't consider being a social media manager because it's not this whole like if they build, it, you know, if you build it, they will come. People will not come to you unless you market to them. All right. So what are the details of um, the program? So there's two options for enrollment. Um, the best deal for so the best bang for your buck is a one-time payment of fourteen ninety-seven. Um, that gives you access to the full six months in the program. Um, that is a savings of over two hundred and fifty dollars um, compared to what the payment plan option is. So again, you're going to get three group coaching calls a month inside of that. Over thirty on-demand video trainings, lifetime access to the videos and future updates access to the community Facebook group that's going to be for the entire uh, student group. Uh, you're going to get content creation training. Um, there's going to be trainings um, that are ongoing in the areas of branding and Pinterest marketing, email marketing, digital marketing, sales, finding clients, bookkeeping for your own business, contracting and invoicing, and more. I'm sure that I'll be coming up with more ideas. Um, you're also going to be getting access to my personal mindset vault and personal development plan, um, as, as well as help and support with setting up your own website. Um, so that is the best deal. So the best thing for your buck is doing the one-time payment. But I understand the times that we're in and that, um, you know, sometimes just paying for everything up front is not available. So I did want to... <coughs> create a payment plan option, um, and that is a six-month payment plan at $2.97 a month. And it's everything that you get um, that I mentioned before, um, it's just on a monthly payment plan. So what I'm doing right now is I'm also going to be releasing a bonus. Um, so this bonus is available right now for the first five students that enroll in the program, which you can enroll right now. Um, the first five students in the program will get private coaching access to me. So inside of the program, you're gonna get access to me inside of the Facebook group and then the three group coaching calls that we have every month. I'll be available to answer questions on those calls and inside of the Facebook group. But if you know that you're serious about you know, starting the social media business and you want one-on-one -on -one access with me, um, then the first five students that enroll will get um, private coaching access with me. So what that looks like is that is two 20 minute calls per month, or you can opt to do just one 40 minute call a month. So that's gonna be a Zoom call, video call, but you'll also have full access to me on Voxer. And Voxer is basically like texting me or walkie talkieing, um, and you'll have full access to me 24 seven. I will not respond to you while I'm sleeping. So there's a disclaimer on that. Um, but that's the best way to get me 
Um, that's my favorite way to communicate, honestly, with my clients that I'm working with in coaching. Um, so that's for the first five students that enroll. Um, and I'm opening up the doors to that right now. So the doors are open for enrollment. And here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing that I want to leave you with, um, with regards to this program as a whole. I knew that when I started my business that I wanted to be able to save myself time that I was working to create the income um, that I wanted to create for my family. Um, but I found myself very early on in this business working so much more um, than I really had planned. And I know that if I had hired a coach or had somebody to show me how to be more intentional, organized, and systematic in my business, um, that I probably could have saved myself a lot of time and grown a lot quicker, you know? Um, so what I'm most excited about in this program is really to take and teach you all the things that I've been able to learn in this last seven years in this industry and really the last two years of having my own social media management business and just download all that knowledge and all that information to you and help you to avoid a lot of those pitfalls and things that I've done that have slowed down my growth so that you can become more successful than me. So enrollment is open. If you have questions or anything about the program, whether it's what's going to be included in the program or, um, you know, what it looks like enrolling or anything along those lines, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Remember the first five students that enroll, get that private coaching with me. Um, and if you have any questions around, you know, any of it, don't hesitate to reach out to me by direct message. And um, I am so excited to get this get this going. Um, day one, I guess you could say, of the, the group coaching program starting is going to be that first full week of October, which is not the first. So the first week, I guess you could say, of the program is gonna be October 5th. So we start the six month program, that, that first full week in October, and that's when we'll be getting access to our first week's group coaching call. Um, but as soon as you enroll, you'll have immediate access to all of the on-demand videos. Um, and if you are one of those first five um, students that enroll, you'll get access to me as your coach immediately. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm so, so, so excited for this program to be opened up. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys soon inside of the Social Media Manager Startup Community Program. So take care, everybody. Have a good one.